And the very first cut of the Woodmiser LT15 electric is happening. The journey to that first cut started long before that ash log was laid down on the mill. At, at some point, I had inquired about what a Woodmiser mill would be. The Wisconsin rep never got back to me. That's okay. I ended up calling the office in Indianapolis and talking to someone. Um, they said the lead time on mills, this is a, a, the fall of 2020, and uh, that the lead time was going to be 30 weeks. So, oh my gosh. I had plenty of time to figure it out. He checked inventory, and I don't know if it was an actual sales gimmick or not. I don't think so. They actually had an LT15 electric, exactly what I was looking for, single phase in stock. And within 30 seconds of hearing that, I said, sure, I'll take it. And within uh, three weeks, there was a sawmill showing up thank you mr delivery guy at the workshop at the gardens and there's the picture that i posted on instagram saying yep there's a sawmill in the house uh i had thought that it was going to be an easy easy setup phase single phase um 220 i had one of those plugs in my shop i thought i was going to stick it in the shop and then i figured it would take me longer to clean the shop than it would to put it outside, but then I needed to clean the log yard. There's a great video about that. There's a card for cleaning the log yard. And then I started thinking about that this is an electric sawmill and I just can't leave it sit out. So then I'm like, hey, let's put up a carport. So then we put up a metal steel sawmill shed. Check it out, there's another video up there. And finally we moved the sawmill underneath that assembled uh, sawmill shed and I thought we were going to be sawing soon. Reality is um, I still had some projects that I needed to get and had been with Duck Hill Workshop. Make sure you check out his channel. Uh, actually Duck Hill Sawmill out and he helped bang out some elm logs. There is a great video on that one. Maybe I'll put that in the description. But it was time to get going on assembling the sawmill. Now for most of you following along in the whole big understanding of the workshop at the gardens, the wood and the milling and all of that is not my day job. It's the side job. It's the side hustle. It's my passion, my hobby, my dream, maybe a business someday. Um, so I can only work on it here and there and when we have time. And the carport actually came in handy because we were able to first uh, do some of our assembly during a rainstorm and it worked out quite nice. Now I put these uh, concrete blocks in and they've worked really well so far. Vinny said I need to screw those down so it uh, doesn't bounce all over the place when I'm mowing logs. I haven't done that yet. It hasn't bounced too much, um, but I probably will do that. I also won't lift uh, the sawmill head with my forks again like that. Bear it over at uh, uh, Bear made it. He had a little incident with moving his sawmill head, so I've learned from that. It's been fun on the YouTube. Uh, watching everybody else work with it there. Great little shot of the log yard in between. We got two of those sections kind of laid out there, and it was time for another wedding or something. Um, just the real day job in there. Take a look over on the side of the shed there and you'll see all that stuff still there. Um, that took us a while just to move all of that. And thanks to Bryce and Liza for helping get the sawmill track all layered out and just helping with the sawmill all together. Anyways, it was back to putting those uh, bases together. I did order four, so there was actually three that comes with the base uh, package of the sawmill, but I ordered a fourth one. One of the reasons I did want to get into milling is I do some timber framing and I have a job coming up that I need some 22, 23 foot timbers. So this will get me 27 feet, um, I think 24 feet milling. So I'll be able to knock those out. This is where you spend just an enormous amount of time um, putting it together, putting all those little pieces in and around and all of that 
and then leveling that bed out. And I'm happy to say we did a pretty good job leveling it because on our final adjustments, we did not have to do that much. So um, levels both directions. And then in the end, I think we threw some string on it. I did the X with the string. That was the last thing we did just before milling. And it was time to get some power there. So I had a junction box down by the shop and uh, we needed to pull about a hundred feet of pipe all the way down. And so that started, I think we are now in August. So a lot of work to get to this point. Um, but you can see along the side of the shed there, all of that stuff that was the there is now gone that took us like two days just to move all that pipe and junk and stuff that had been collecting for 30 or 40 years yes the little bobcat excavator is old and it's very very tired but it is faster than a shovel on a hot day and i like to use my shovels well there sits the sawmill waiting for some power uh, we've gotten the bed all together. You've seen that. Especially on another warm day. We, uh, I, I wasn't putting this off, but I was kept hoping for a day that wasn't in the 90s. And, you know, that's pretty much been the whole summer here. Anyways, about 100 feet of trench all the way down to the junction box. Let's head down there. Right here we are on the other end. Now, I don't know the whole history of this building. I know my guess is there's been six additions to it over time. And I did hear that uh, there used to be a lumber yard down in Castle Rock, right in the, the village, right by the railroad tracks. There's a couple greenhouses sitting there right now. It used to be the Castle Rock lumber. My grandfather took the building down and part of it is just inside that door right there. So. Looks like I'm not the first one in the family to repurpose a few things. Anyways, um, what happens when you're working around old additions and buildings is somebody decides to leave concrete. And I don't know if it's a footing or just an, I don't know what it is, but it was right in the way of where we're gonna go up into this junction box right here to run the power down to the sawmill. So again, on a nice 90 degree day, we're Taking good old trusty and busting concrete out, but that's okay. Uh, what's next? We're going to do a little bit of shovel work here. We need to be 24 inches down minimum for concrete, or not concrete, for conduit. And goodness gracious, if you haven't bought in conduit lately, wow. I thought lumber was expensive. Buy some two inch conduit. All right, we've got to get this in the ground. Let's do it. Sometimes what happens when it's hot out and you're not the real electrician, you're just getting it all ready for your electrician. You do something like this and you take one too many rings out, which means the two inch fitting that I have is not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to get a two and a half inch coupler, put that in there and do a bushing, size it down, which means I'm not gonna be starting on the fun end. I am gonna actually get started on the other end with a piece right now, mainly because in under 24 hours, there's gonna be a wedding here and this has to be done, installed, cleaned up and ready to go. So that's looking pretty good. 
Uh, I didn't pack it. Yeah, that's fine. What'll happen is with moisture, rain, if we ever get rain again, it'll settle down. I use the old crushed limestone on top. That'll settle down and it's ready to kind of scrape this a little bit and put a new layer of crushed down. So once this settles down a little bit, I'll just add crush to it and let mother nature do the packing. All right, got as far as I can. Time to go home, time to make some BLTs and we will finish that up tomorrow and clean this all up before the wedding. So the conduit's all tied into the junction box there. Heading down, we have a little bit of trenching to fill in on the other end. Yeah, you were probably wondering what uh, all this rock and granite is all about. I'll post a card up there. Why don't you check that out? Like hand quarry boulders. Yeah, that's something fun to do on hot days. Uh, I'd mentioned that wood from the old Castle Rock uh, lumber yard, and that's it right there. So. Kind of cool in the old building here because everyone needs a sigh yeah. on there. Oh, you notice that too? A little ATC. This is the newer one. Got rid of the 185 and have a nice little 200 there. The all-terrain cycle. You need one. Okay, what's left here? Just this little pile. Just a little bit in the hole here and the power and there she is. It's pretty daggone close. Now there's no doubt that some parts of this project I filmed more than the other and I think that was just as I could get things done. Um, September has rolled around and it was time to set the sawmill head so we moved that pallet of elm trimmings out of the way and yes using the straps probably mainly because it would spin um, to a line perpendicular with the track uh, easier but just not wanting to drop it like bear made it did anyways panel um, is hooked up the cable is pulled through that conduit and the electrician um, which I didn't pressure he, I said come get it when you have time and that's what he did the junction box luckily there was enough uh, spots in there to add this cable so that was really easy to do and on the other end I can't even remember right now I think it was a 200 amp service that we added down there Every time I do an expansion, I always oversize everything because somehow I fill everything up over time. Anyways, another shot looking into the log yard from up above. And as we turn the corner, yes, you'll notice there's another three loads of walnut logs there. Kept bringing in the logs even though I didn't have anything to mill them with except for my chainsaw and I didn't even have time to do that. But if you take a look on the wall over there from the junction box over is where um, we centered it kind of on the mill itself is where the plug-in would be. But one thing that I had to add, which wasn't in the workshop, is the slow burn fuse, 80 amp fuse. And that had to be in there, that spec by Woodmiser to put that in there. And then we did the 220 plug. Uh, ordered the power feed right from the get-go, believe it or not. I'm still having a little bit of trouble with it, but we'll get that sorted out. Um, but wiring that into the box was um, a task, not gonna lie. That took a little bit to get in there. And the last little step, um, it was until December when Gus came out, say hi to Gus, that's Gus, where he did the final adjustment and I picked out the first log, a beautiful ash log. 
I, I don't know why that was the log I picked, but it is. There it is, the first log on the mill. And after everything all ready to go, trying to figure it out, there was a small little piece of dirt stuck in where the lubricant comes out. So that took us an extra hour to find that. But then it was time to throw the switch, track that power down in. Um, I was going through the cycle, Gus was going through the cycle, and when I hit the button, it was kind of funny because he was like, whoa. <laughs> Anyways, um, the motor's going, but it, there is an engagement to get the blade going, so no harm, so done there. Moved it forward, and if you're noticing, um, I didn't have very many cameras set up, and I'm doing this with my iPhone, so my first operation of the mill and setting a level is one-handed because I've got a bloody iPhone in the other hand. But it was kind of exciting because we're nearing in almost 12 months from that first call into Wood Miser, and I'm cutting my first log. So uh, very, very exciting, and... Yeah, if you have a mill, you know what it's like. All that work, all that desire to get the blade spinning, and I think we've talked about that all along. The blade is now spinning. Haven't gotten as much milling as I would have liked to do this winter. Uh, as everything happens, I think once you get one piece in, you find the weakness of your overall system and now that I can cut logs faster I can't get them stacked and stickered as fast I don't have enough stickers and it's just the enjoyment of this whole thing as I said this is a hobby maybe someday a business having just a ton of fun salvaging logs collecting logs milling things and making cool stuff out of it and and just like that if you remember your first cut there it is and then we banged out the rest of that log. Um, I think I did it all in 10 quarter, most likely, or it might, yeah, might even have been six quarter. Either way, it was absolutely wonderful to get that log milled up. Um, hey, thank you so much for following along on this journey of getting the mill up and running in those first cuts. But we're going to be sharing a lot more videos from the log yard. So, hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment, uh, like the video, and just follow along as we have a good life in the log yard. That's it for now. Take care. Enjoy. Enjoy.